plus some extra number. So this is A. This is A plus some extra number. That's how we get that second spot. Okay. So this is a way of describing the input still using A twice. Rather than using a A1 over here and another A2 over here, we get to use the same A plus some H that takes it out a little bit. Okay, so if you input A using function notation, the output will be f of A. And if A plus H is your input here, then the output there will be f of A plus H. Okay. So our average rate of change using this notation will be f of a plus h minus f of a all over a plus h minus a. Okay. Now, now that we're using the a's and the h's and the function notation, you'll notice that we don't get to use the deltas here. The reason why we don't get to use deltas is because we don't have two x's or two f's. We do have um, f's, but they're not the same. Well, sorry, they are the same, but we can't write it as a delta, and definitely not the denominator. So instead, we'll write the simplified version in this way. We'll cancel out the a, negative a and the a, being an h, and we'll leave the top alone and say f of a plus h all over f of a. Okay, so this final form we're going to use for a lot of our uh, problems to find the chords or the slope of these chords. The chords are the lines that go from here to here through those points. Okay, we're hunting down the slope of these lines that go through these two points. Okay, and those slopes happen to be our average rate of change. Secondly, we'll also be after the actual equation of these lines. So be prepared to find out exactly what the equation of that line is, besides its slope. Okay, number 20. We're going to find the, calculate the average rate of change over the interval A to a plus h. And then we need to calculate the average rate of change for when h is 1. And then again when h is 0.1 and again yet when h is 0.01. So we'll have many rates of change to calculate. So you're going to need your calculators. In this particular case, a is 1 Therefore, the next point will be 1 plus whatever h is. This time we're going to use the formula that includes the a and the h, which is f of a plus h minus f of a over h. We know that a is being used for 1, so we're going to replace that. Okay. And now, it's a matter of finding what f of h plus 1 looks like. Uh, a, f of 1 plus h looks like, and also knowing what f of 1 looks like. Okay. If f of x is x squared over 2, then f of 1 plus h will be 1 plus h squared all over 2. If f of x is x squared over 2, then f of 1 
will be 1 squared all over 2, which ends up being 1 half. Okay. Well, let's put all this together so we can get our average rate of change. which will be f of 1 plus h, which looks like this. All over 2 minus f of 1, which is 1 half, all over h. Now algebraically, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to simplify that. And our method we're going to use is we're going to get rid of all the denominators by multiplying by the least common denominator. Our denominators are 2, 2, and 1. So the common denominator for 2, 2, and 1 will be 2. So I'll multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. Two times this term will cancel the other two, and we'll end up with 1 plus h all squared. 2 times negative 1 half is going to be negative 1, and 2 times h is 2h. Now, we can go on and simplify this further, but this is as far as we need to do because we're going to let our calculators do the rest of the work. Because all we need to find is we need to replace h with the number 1 and find the arc. They will replace h with point 0.1 and find the next number on the arc, or the average rate of change, and continue that. To make this process faster, we're going to use our calculators. If you would, go to your y equals button, and for y1, we're going to type this function in here so we can put numbers in for h using the calculator. The, what I would like you to type in be the numerator would have its own parenthesis. Then we have this parenthesis here, the 1 plus the h. Now, your calculator doesn't really have the h, so we're going to use an x instead of the h. Close parenthesis. Hit your square button. Minus 1 is here. And close the numerator. Then hit your division button. And then 2 times h, or 2 times x in our case. Once that's in your calculator, you're going to graph it on a 10 by 10 graph. Um, the best way to get a 10 by 10 graph is to go to your zoom button and go to standard. Zoom standard would take you to a 10 by 10 graph. Furthermore, your graph should look something like this. Okay. Once you get that graph, you can hit your trace button to input numbers for your h. Let's say you want h to be 1. That means you want x to be 1. After you hit trace, trace button, type in the number 1, and you will see at the bottom of your screen, x equals 1. Then hit enter. And the value you get that we'll get, uh, once you put x is 1 in, you'll get an answer of 1.5 for your arc. Then type in the number 0.1 and then enter and you'll get 0 0.005 for your arc. Okay. That's when x equals 0 0.1. And you continue to put in new h values, which I'm calling, which are with the x values, but I'm, ca I'm calling them h, you put 0 0.01 and get new arcs each time.